storage and assets management. What an exciting topic. Centralized storage is something I mention quite often, but never go in details what it means. In this video, hopefully you will understand why it is important for you as a professional and what benefits it gives you. First thing first, this video is possible thanks to Synology, who kindly equipped my home studio with their servers. The reason why this collaboration happened though is because I'm a Synology user commercially. In our studio we use two of Synology servers, bigger ones. I bought them several years ago and never physically touched them since then. This is the best sign of quality in my opinion. We have over 20 people using these servers on a daily basis, remotely these days and directly when the world was normal. I did separate CG team from design team because each team have very different technical requirements. CG team is using server constantly. We read our assets from the server, we edit our videos from the server, we render to the server all the time. So straight away it's obvious that CG team needs better bandwidth. And you can get 10G connectivity with Synology servers by installing 10G expansion card. In some of the recent Synology units like the one I have there, 1621XS+, 10G comes by default. It doesn't end with just this card being installed, unfortunately. You need to make sure that your whole network is 10G, obviously. And this is done by high category cabling in the building where you work or by creating internal 10G networks. For that, you would need additional 10G switches. Uh, not to mention your workstations need to be able to support 10G. A lot of uh, high-end new motherboards have 10G by default, or you can buy additional 10G extension cards for your workstation. So getting back to our commercial setup, CG team is in its separate 10G network, while design team is in regular 1G network. Because they don't need all, all that speed, they read the file, they work on it for some time, then they save it. It's not like you are constantly rolling and reading and writing the hundreds of frames, so no particularly heavy load is present. Why do I recommend centralized storage? Not only for businesses, but for individuals that are serious about their work I have a totally same setup at home now thanks to Synology and it opens up so many possibilities for me as an artist. One of the main reasons is render management. When your projects become more and more complicated you want to use as many machines as you can get. I use Deadline for my render management and this tool will help me to explain why centralized storage is so important. When I'm done working on a scene on this station here, I submit the project to Deadline for rendering. Deadline then assigns the separate frames to separate machines I have at home. But in order to do so, it needs to find the scene and all its assets somewhere in a shared location. Basically, all the machines in your render from have to be able to open the project all the same regardless workstation. If something froze, Deadline will restart the frame for me. If something crashed, Deadline will restart the frame for me. If I want to work on this machine, I can disable it from rendering and work on it while other machines will keep rendering my project. Second reason to use the servers is technical management and maintenance. Plugins, fonts, scripts, HDAs, anything is stored on server. In Fusion, for example, instead of installing all the fuses, all the scripts manually on each machine, I can just amend my user path and tell Fusion where to look for these assets. And in my case, it is looking for these assets on the server. All machines looking for these assets in the same place. So I don't have to install anything, I just tell Fusion where to look for it. 
Same with Houdini, all HDAs, all the previously created tools are all centralized, so they work all the same on all the machines. And third reason is remote access. Now the CG team in our studio have machines running 24 seven, and this is their connection point. They connect to the server through the station that is physically present in the network within the studio. The other part of the team, the design team, are working on laptops, which they are taking home. So they don't have any access points within the studio. Synology does have remote connection functionality. All you need to do is create a remote connection link with one click and share it with the team members where they will be able to use their credentials, passwords to log in and have uh, access to the server from anywhere in the world. This smoothly takes me to the next thing I cherish Synology for. Their management system. It's very easy to use and it's so flexible that it can adapt to any need, really. You can easily create hundreds of users with their own name, password, email, all that stuff. That helps to secure server access. You can create personal folders that will only be visible to corresponding users. You can again set up remote access for these users in a couple of clicks. I just love the tools that make my life easier. This is a brilliant example. What do you do when you got your unit in? How, how does it work? How do you set it up? Depending on which unit you will choose to go with, uh, it may be a bit pricey. But you don't need to fill a whole server straight away. You don't need to fill each hard drive bay with a hard drive, you know. You can expand as you go, but you need at least two drives to start. The reason for that is redundancy. Another major point, by the way. If by some reason one of your drives decide to die, you won't lose any data. Just replace faulty drive and everything will be back to normal. You can choose RAID configurations when setting up the server, but I always go with RAID 5. For all the years, I didn't have any faulty drives, luckily. But it's nice to know that all the data have additional layer of protection. Installation is quite straightforward. You don't really need to figure anything out. Download the installation manager on their website, run it, it will automatically detect uh, the server on the network and will guide you through the process. In regards to 10G network, I did the same thing I did in the studio. I created an internal 10G network within my office. So all my machines and servers are connected to 10G Netgear switch. As for the configuration of both of these servers, uh, 1621 Plus has three 6 terabyte drives for all my temporary camera offloads and three 4 terabytes SSDs for all my caching simulations. And 1621 XS Plus has six 12 terabyte hard drives and it's a repository of all my works and assets. Both units have RAM expansions and SSD cache modules installed. All you do to expand your storage is you pop one of the drive bays out, you put your hard drive in, pop the bay back in, and that's it. In the management system, you then choose the volume that you've created when you were installing the server and tell it to add this drive to the volume. It will take some time for the system to safely expand the storage, but this is basically all you have to do. Also, all the units are expandable beyond the amount of drive base in your model. You can buy another expansion unit and connect it with specialized cable and the whole rig will work as one. All the units are super flexible for any workflow and they have expansions for many different tasks so you can enhance particular operations. If you would like to use SSDs in the drive base, it's possible as well. You can configure something other than RAID 5 and have like ultra fast space. For me personally, server is all about the balance between the speed and amount of storage. Final thing I'll say is that these units are very good looking. I have no desire to hide them somewhere. On the opposite, I think they really fit well in my personal workspace. The build quality is of the highest 
standard high-tech look. I love it. That would be all I have to say about centralized storage and I hope this video is helpful to anyone on the lookout. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments section. I always reply to questions about something that I didn't mention in the video. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Thank you.